But I'm, I'm actually really concerned that I might not be able to do this vlog though. Why? Because I'm so hungry and I might just want to sit and eat the food and down the line. Well, you know, if you just <laughs> eat the whole vlog then you just eat the whole vlog. Where we pair the. I think if you put tomato sauce on it, it's not gonna. Mm. Okay, that's my favourite part of the fish. <laughs> We're gonna pair some um, sparkling wine, I'm joking, <laughs> with um, some fish and chips. This is known as a classic pairing. What is it? Mm hmm. Also, other classic pairings are like Chablis and oysters. A lot of people say like burgundy and chocolate, but it has to be the right kind of chocolate. Um, goat's cheese and Sancerre. Mm. Um, and maybe in a future episode, you'll find out what goes really well with burgers. Oh, you might. Some of you may or may not have heard of this pairing, but actually that it is legit. We haven't made it up. What wine pairing rules are there, Heather? So what grows together goes together. So, and predominantly in places like Italy, they say that when you, if you're drinking the wine from a particular region, you would try and pair that with the food from a particular region. So um, Tuscan wines you would want to have with dishes with truffles and other Tuscan things and, and that sort of thing. And that kind of... That tends to stand particularly with old, old world wines. And also the weight of the food. So if you're thinking like it's a super heavy meal, like in your mind if you're going that is a super heavy meal. It's not like a light fish or anything like that. Um, mm. Did I cheers? Oh, it's just cheers. Cheers, let's try the wine. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. That is really pretty nice. Oh, wow. Isn't it? Yeah. It tastes really champagne-y. Yeah, it tastes really champagne. Do you not think? Yeah, totally. So basically, this is English sparkling wine that's been made. Can I talk about the wine just for a sec? Mm -hmm. It's English sparkling wine that's been made in the champagne method. Have you had any English sparkling wine before? Heather? I actually have. Uh, have you? I, yeah, remember we had it at the wine tasting? Or did we? Which wine tasting? Marchstown. No, that's what we guessed it was, but it was something else. Oh, fuck. Anyway, so <laughs> but that's where we learned about this pairing at one of the Marchtown um, wine pairings. So can I talk about the wine a little bit? Oh, yeah. Do you mind? Okay. Um, so this is a sparkling wine that's made from... It's made from English grapes. Um, and this company just basically buys the grapes that were grown in England and makes... Um, the sparkling wine from it using the champagne method. So what we thought was it would be pretty cool to have something really British like the fish and chips with a British sparkling wine. We should talk about the most crucial element. What's the most crucial element? <laughs> Stop eating all the fucking batter. Whether it works. Oh, we'll Whether have a little bit of fish. Have yeah. a little bit of fish. So it's fish with delicious batter. Well, actually, I think that works. Mm -hmm. I think it totally works because it's it's almost be becomes kind of creamy. Did you notice that I got you a special pickled onion? Yeah, Heather got us two pickled onions. I used to like eating them. I used to put them in sandwiches. Hmm? So I'd like slice them in half and put them on a cheese sandwich. It's amazing. I don't know why I've never done that. Oh, why is it called Dippy again? Oh, it's named after the people who designed the bottle. The first person to design the shape of um, wine bottle. Digby. We learned all about that today in our daily visit to Jane, to the good best friend. We, we had a lovely time, didn't we? What do you think to this versus champagne? There's definitely like a different, like, something in it. I don't know, it's like really clean fruit. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's not quite, it's still creamy, but it's not quite as creamy as champagne. 
there's a slight hint more acidity, but it is it is really close mm. to me. And that's, I mean, it's pretty much grown in really similar soil, similar climate. Actually, uh, Tatanji and some other big producers have actually bought up quite a chunk of land mm-hmm. now in England because slowly climate change is having an effect. An impact. Mm. We're doing better at the fish and chips or the English. See, the thing is, it doesn't really have a... English sparkling wine doesn't really have the same... Yeah, it's, th- it's not like a thing like champagne, but then... Or Prosecco or Cava. Mm-hmm. So you want to call it like... Um, Brut. En... En Gling. En... Are you broken again? <laughs> I was thinking about combining like the words English and sparkling wine all together. Engling. So we're drinking. Sparklish. We're drinking. Oh, sparklish. We're drinking sparklish. Would you have this again, Heather? Mm. Yes, but I'd get two chippies instead of one. So we got our chippy from G's, which is on Morrison Street. Morrison Street. Opposite the Village Curry place, and it's just a little takeaway fish and chip shop, but. It's won some awards. Uh, yeah, and it's really, really good. I love fish and chips, by the way. I know. How Me much um, tomato sauce did you think that you would need? Well, that's one sachet. Sachet. Really? Mm-hmm. That's one sachet. So, I'm going to recommend that everybody on Friday night, chippy and champagne, slash English. This is the thing, right? So... Your champagne might cost you quite a lot of money. Like even this English sparkling wine was not cheap. Yeah, um, but your chippy costs you four pounds fifty, so it's like a balance. I think this would work with most, like um, most sparkling wine, like Cava Prosecco, as long as it wasn't like a super sweet. I think it's probably best with mm, champagne, that. English sparkling wine, kind of really pretty dry Cava, that kind of thing. And tonight. We are not going to stick a spoon in this and put it in the bread. <laughs> right, what do you give the pickled onion out of 10? 40. What do you give the champagne out of 10, this, this English sparkling wine? It's like an 8.5. I like it. I'll what have it again. What about the chippy? The chippy gets an 8.52. Mm. Exactly oh. the same scores for me. Oh, really? Yeah, that doesn't... That, I thought that would be disgusting, but it really wasn't. It's not that I don't believe you, but... But you don't believe me. Mmm. Mmm. Pickled onion is delicious. Right? Right. Right. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so we have used science to decide whether or not chippies go with... Whether it's true or not, because we think it's true. I think, yeah. I, that's true. Yeah, so in all elements, tomato sauce? Uh, yeah, tomato, tomato sauce is fine with it. Do you want me to finish this? Do you want it though? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Good. Because I'll let you have most of the fish and chips. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not true. Yep. It's not true. Oh, so our inspiration was the extraordinary Sir Kelm Digby, Digby a 17th century philosopher pirate and scientist pirate oh shit so that's even better because fish is in the sea look at the size look at the size of that tomato Louise doesn't like tomato sauce but some people do that is a giant mountain that is a mountain of tomato sauce I think it was definitely more than one squid. I've seen you eating so much mayonnaise (laughs) that the mayonnaise gave you food poisoning and then you eat it again the next day and then it gave you more food poisoning and then you (laughs) eat it again the next day and then it gave you more food poisoning and you thought you really had a bad stomach bug. Right? 